Hey everybody, welcome to Nation. My name is Jersey and you are here. What's going on? Uh, if it is your first time checking us out, what's up? Like I said, my name is Jersey. Have a look around. Hopefully you enjoy it. Hopefully this episode isn't the worst thing you've seen on YouTube today or listened to. Um, and you want to go back and check out other episodes. Now this is episode 55. We've done this now for over a year. Every single week, every single Friday, it comes out a new, crispy, delicious episode. <laughs> anyway, if you are one of the cool kids, one of the people who watch this every single week, thumbs up the YouTube videos. You've commented, you've subscribed, you've done all that, and you listen to the podcast. Heck, you've even shared it out. What's going on? It's because of you guys that we get to do this show, so I truly, truly appreciate that. And finally, if you're one of the elite, which more and more of you are, I love it. Every single week, I'm getting like dozens of new people. This is awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. If you are somebody who watches or listens, thumbs up, subscribes, shares all my content, and even more importantly, you buy your supplies through me, window cleaning and pressure washing supplies, it is because of you that I get to have name brand cereal in the morning, so thank you very much. Uh, I truly, truly appreciate that. And if you want to buy your supplies through me, big or little, I mean, I'm talking about any type of order, any type, even tickets to the convention, hit me up. Let me know. It's 862-312-2026. Text me. It's the best way to get a hold of me because, you know, sales, we work all day. I have to shower and go to the gym and everything else. So, you know, do that. Shoot me a text first. But anyway, let me know. Put it all in your cart even. Text me and be like, what's up, Jersey? I'm ready to put the order in, and I can certainly do that for you. Virtual high five if you do that. But thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all of you who do that. Truly, it's ridiculously awesome, and I really genuinely enjoy it. So thank you very, very much. If you also just want to tell me what's up, the show sucks, the show is awesome, or I like turtles, you could also text me, 862-312-2026. Thank you. Uh, anyway, okay, so on to this week's show. Now... I said last week we gave away a pair of tickets to the huge convention. This week, we're going to do it again. The winner this week is getting a pair of tickets to the huge convention this year in Atlanta, coming up in just a couple months. The winner of that is, it is Max West. Max, what is up, man? You won. Shoot me a, uh email, josh at window cleaning resource. Let me know your deets. And if you're going to the show, if you are, I would love to give you some free tickets. So let me know. This week, if you want to win, all you got to do is comment on the YouTube video. Or or you can share any of the content. The podcast is huge. Now, we have, when you guys look at this, we have 10 times the people. Okay, maybe not. Uh, a little less than 10 times the people that are following the podcast side of it over the um, uh, YouTube side of things. So I don't want to just exclude those people. So share the content. If you share it or even comment on uh, the uh, SoundCloud file or any of them, definitely do that. Share it. You're also entered into the random drawing. Um, so, yeah, do that. You could win. Just comment down below if you're watching this on YouTube. That's your other chance to win. You'll win next week. We're going to be giving away uh, randomly to anybody. So comment, blah, blah, blah. You know how it works. I don't know why I say this every week. You know how it works. Anyway, this week I want to give shout-outs to Marcos and uh, Michiko. I think I said your name right. Sorry if I didn't. I know I was practicing that when we were talking. And Anyway, what's going on? Also, uh, Bo and Robin. What's going on? Lots of couples. That's awesome, awesome, awesome. And uh, Aaron uh, McCohen. McEwen. McK. Q. Aaron. <laughs> what's up? Uh, what's going on? Uh, I probably butcher. I butchered names all the time. Sorry. Sorry. But anyway, what's going on? I just want to say hey to y'all. Um, and I want to talk about the huge convention real quick. So this year, it is coming up in August. It is August 23rd and 24th. If you saw our live we just did uh, a few days ago before this comes out, it was with Ramon Burke, who is one of our speakers. Uh, we did that on the Window Cleaning Resource Facebook page. 
Uh, go ahead and like that if you want. Uh, click the little bell on the Facebook page. You'll get all the notifications for that. We do a lot of lives. It's awesome to talk to you guys live that way, so definitely do that. But it is August 23rd, 24th, and it is at the Marquis Marriott in Atlanta. Awesome venue. Tickets are going crazy fast. Buy your tickets. Even better, call me. Shoot me a text. Say, I want tickets. I'll get you in for those tickets. Uh, you can order them right through me. That's awesome. Tickets go up incrementally from here on, so they will not be cheaper than they are right this minute. So hit me up, 862-312-2026. There you go. Go to the show. You'll love it. There's nothing like it. You know, it's awesome. So this week in the show, we're going to be talking about pricing. Now, I know we've done a pricing episode, and I'm going to be doing episodes. We haven't done that one for like a year, man. So we're going to be doing it again, but this time I want to kind of travel a little off the bidding itself as opposed to here's what I charge per piece or per thing or per whatever, but the whys, the what are you going to look at, what are you going to look for, why is your price what it is, and what should you be looking for? And again, I'm just some dude who has stickers on a backdrop. That's all I am, but I can tell you my thoughts um, and uh, what I think of it. Doesn't mean I'm right, doesn't mean you have to do anything that I'm saying. Whatever you do is right, but here are kind of some suggestions. Now, with that being said, bidding in general is always going to be subjective, right? I know somebody who is in Maryland, and they are in a very wealthy zip code, and their houses, their average ticket is like $1,000. $1,000 is their average ticket. Now, you may not be in that part of Maryland. You may not be in the rich part. You may be up in the mountains of West Virginia. I don't know. Wherever you are, prices are going to be a little bit different. So that's the one thing I always say is um, you take the prices and adjust them where you are. Now, where I say averages, what we're talking about today, pricing and averages, not the whys, but the price itself, take that. Try that number. Whatever you charged yesterday, Charge one more dollar a window. Try that. Try increasing your, try 50%. I did that years ago. I decided one day for one week I was going to double my, or 50% increase on my prices and not one person said no. Craziness. That's how I knew I was too low. But go ahead and raise your prices. I'm telling you, you'd be surprised that you could charge more than what you're charging now. But the average price per window, inside and outside on uh, a window, which would be, in, in 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 fairness, two panes, so a double hung, it's two pieces of glass, that's actually a window, okay, when I say window, if you got crank outs, there's usually one that goes right and one goes left, that is a window, those two pieces, so two panes of glass, calculate that out, is $10 inside and out, now, that is on residential, that's all I'm talking about right now, pricing wise, just what that is, that's national average, uh, on storefronts, you can get a buck, right? There's there's kind of the pricing side of things. Now, let's talk about why there's a huge difference between the prices and why we bid what we do on different windows. Now, this whole thing has been suggested by Carlos. So, Carlos is a regular uh, of Nation, and we love Carlos. Uh, Carlos uh, Saldua? I'm butchering names. But yeah, Carlos. Carlos comments on every video. He is the man, and uh, I love seeing his stuff pop up. So he is awesome. He suggested this. So this is what we're going for. I hope this is kind of more on what you're looking for. Um, but let's just kind of jump into it. Pricing is different between different types of residential, commercial, storefront, or car dealerships like Carlos wants to kind of know a little bit about. So First off, I'm going to talk about the difference between pricing per hour and pricing per window. Because some people who call me, and I do bids all the time, people say, hey, it's my first time bidding, or um, I have a project that's huge, I just want a second opinion. I get emails multiple times a week, multiple times, that I do bids with people. I go over it with the phone, I look at the pictures. It's awesome. Here's what I think. You're either on, you're way off, you're way under, you're way over. Here's what I see that I would throw as red flags you get to then pick from there. Um, they're really the same thing. Pricing per hour and pricing per window is pretty much the same thing. What? 
but it is. Listen. So if you can do X amount of windows per hour, you know that is what you calculate. I want to make, say, $65 per man hour. Again, may vary for you. If I want to make $65 a man hour, I know I need to do X amount of windows per hour to create that amount, right? So if you're new in business, count windows. It's a little bit uh, trickier, and I'll explain it in a second. If you count windows, then doing hourly, it changes. If you have a uh, window set that has a transom, that transom is not going to take you as long as the other window. Because it's right there, you may have a whole bay of windows where there may be 30 windows in a bay. That bay may take you the same time as it would take you to do two or three windows because it's all right there. You're moving right next to each other. You know, if you're water feeding, you're going right, you know, so it may change even if you're doing that. Now, the problem in lines is that if you bid a 30 bay window, I'm sorry, 30 window bay, the same as uh, per window as compared to hourly, your per window price is going to be way higher. Now, that 30 window bay window on some commercial storefront or something, some type of uh, job, uh, residential or anything, if that job, if that just that one window set, you charge it as 30 windows, which would say, I can do um, 30, uh, I could do one window a minute, right? So that's 60 windows a minute. We'll say for even numbers. If I'm trying to make $60, it's a dollar a window. Uh, if I could do a dollar per pane and I can do one pane in a minute, then that's 60. See how I'm translating that, right? Now, if that window, it says I'm just going to take me 30 minutes to do that one window. So I should charge $30 for that window. Now, again, these are just even numbers. Don't let that part fool you. But if it's in my calculations on that window, it says it's going to take me 30 minutes to do that window. But it really only takes me five minutes to do it, right? Because they're all right there, whatever it is. Now the problem is, now if they go, oh, great, let's do it. No problem at all, right? You just made a bunch of money. I love buttloads of money. It's awesome. But now if they go, well, that's way higher than every other bid. That's why. Now, we don't always price based on money. We just don't. It's not It's not worth it if you're pricing, um, if you're selling your job on the price, then you haven't told people what they're buying, right? They're only buying on the price. So if you do that, they still will look at price. If it's way off because of that, they're going to notice. Now, if they still go with it, awesome. But that's why you want to do hourly over per window. And it's going to take a little bit of time. The longer you're doing this, the more... You could tell me how many bedrooms a house has, how many floors it has, square footage, and I can give you a price. I could tell you from just telling me what style windows, I can bid it. I don't even have to see the house, right? You do it long enough, you get it. A lot of you can do that. A lot of you guys can do that. That's the first set on all this is bidding per hour per window. So there's a little bit of difference in that. But starting with residential, there's a few things to really look at. Now, I say cookie cutter a lot. And cookie cutter is a great way to kind of explain a standard 2,500 square foot, three bedroom, two and a half bath house, right? They throw them up in three months. A house takes three months to build. They can build a subdivision. That's awesome. Those are great money. Now, the problem in lies in subdivisions and things is that a subdivision, I live in a subdivision of 900 and something homes. In 900 homes, they should all be relatively the same, right? Kind of close on the window count, right? The problem in lines is a walk, uh, walkout basement. We have those here. Walkout basement, not only does that include more windows now, but it raises everything else. So now your second floor is technically third floor. You should be maybe charging more for that. You should know your equipment limitations when it comes for that. So ground level. How level is the ground? That's a big one. The walkout stuff always have more, uh, if you're water feeding, more water fed uh, pole than you think you need because you'll end up using it. Now, what if there's a dormer on the second floor, but it's a walkout? Now, there's a dormer on a third floor, which is technically fourth floor. Now, you're like, oh, man, I'm SOL. I don't have the equipment for that. So, knowing that is going to change that price. Um, Another thing with the ground is not just the levelness of the ground, but what's there. Do they have um, big bushes? Are they going to have trees? Are they going to have ivy? Are they having anything that's on the ground that goes up that is going to be in your way? That's a huge factor to changing the price. Now, you're going to hear me say something called a PETA pricing. We charge PETA for a lot of stuff. That's pain in the ass. 
because there's a lot of that out there. And my time is worth what my time is worth. Now, if it takes me to do one window 10 times longer than it does to tell you the other window, I'm going to charge 10 times as much for that window. Why? Because a dollar, it still costs a dollar, right? So I'm going to charge my time. I want my time to be valuable. So that's why you look for these things. Um, but ground level, that's a big one. What's coming up on the ground? Is it level? What's growing? What's in your way? That type of thing. Walkouts, a huge problem. Make sure you're checking for that. That will change the price. Um, outbuildings. On residential, do they have a garage? Do they have something that's unattached? Do they have um, uh, a pole barn? Do they have an extra property or piece or shed or something that you need to do work for? Not always do they have that. It's not that common. Um, I have a shed at the house I live in now, and it has one window. And would I ever pay to have that clean? No, probably not. Now, somebody was there, and they said, uh, whatever, it gets thrown in. And then, yeah, okay, clean it, right? But you, you need to know that. The other big thing on garage windows and sh uh, shed windows, pole barns, that type of thing, they don't get cleaned very often. And the insides don't get clean, and you've all been to the garage or shed where the windows are jacked up, spiders and grossness and 30 years of crap in front of those windows in the garage you can't even get to, right? So you have to know that when you're bidding it. So keep that in mind. If there's garage windows, charge more for garage windows. Even garage door windows suck. There's a lot of bug butts on those things, man. That's where the bugs are trying to escape. The spiders like that. They eat the bugs. The garage lights are on. It's a whole thing. So you got to charge more for the garage windows. People will say, what do you charge in a garage window? I charge a lot. Like per window, I'm charging a normal window price per section because they suck. They're a lot of work. They're very intensive. It's going to take me a lot longer to do one window of those than it would to do one window in a house. So keep that all in mind. Garage windows suck. Uh, what's in the way? That also sucks. Now, if you're on a residential um, house... And you have a person that has lots of tchotchkes and lots of things in the windows. Porcelain dogs, hummels, I don't know what that is, but it's a thing. Porcelain plates, anything that they have that's in the window that you now have to take all down, that's taking time. So here's what I always want to say. Now, I'll price for that, but when I get to a house... You're always going to tell somebody that, uh, you know, our estimate is this. When we get to the house, we'll let you know, count the windows, make sure everything's right, especially if you're using responsive, but I say the same thing. But I'll say, when I get to your house, I'm going to just double check, verify everything, and I'll let you know. Now, if I get into somebody's house and they have a bunch of crap in the window, I'm going to let them know, say, okay, well, we're going to start right now. If you just want to start taking everything down out of the window, we don't want to damage any of your personal property. I hate for it to get dirty from our water and that type of thing. People usually... 99% of the time, I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah, absolutely, I'll get that down for you. I don't want that to be in your way. Or when they call, they say that. And I always let the homeowner do it. Why? Because when they take it down, they're going to want to put it back. If they take it down, they're usually dusting it. They're going to put it back in a certain order. If I take it down and I put it back up, it's going to be in the wrong order unless I stage it and then I got to put it back and then they're going to take it down and dust it anyway. So it's going to save me a little bit of work. It's going to save me a little bit of time if the homeowner does it themselves. So try to have that done by the homeowner. Um, but residential pricing, two panes of glass with no of any of these hindrances. I said, uh, I'm charging $10 for inside and outside seven fifty for outs. Now, where does that number come from real quick? 20 window special, one ninety nine. Great, sexy number one ninety nine. 20 windows. Oh, that's great. That equates to about $10 a window inside and outside, right? So inside and outside 20 windows. I always say 20 windows, one ninety nine. I go, great. Well, I got 24 windows. No problem. You know what? I'll extend that price over to you. So it'll be $240, right? You can certainly do that. That's where that price comes from. $750 comes from 20 windows outside only $149. Oh, that's a sexy number. $149? That's pennies. $149. Of course I'll do that, right? But I got 24 windows. We'll go ahead and extend that price for you, All right? So that's where we get to the pricing. $7.50 for just the outs. $10 for ins and outs. Now, screens charge three bucks a screen uh tracks if they want deep cleaning like toothbrush vacuum the whole nine i'm gonna charge uh two dollars for that so total of fifteen dollars inside and outside per window with all the goodies those are my pricing it goes up if it's more of a pain in the butt for certain things now you don't have to break it down into um uh, there's like a a net here and i apologize 
Uh, you don't have to break that down into the price so that they see that. You can put that down as a total price. They don't need to know that that one window is going to be a pain in your ass that you're charging more, right? They just need to see the whole thing. But when you're looking at it, that's how you price. And this is pricing so you don't lose in the future. Every one of us has been a job and we got done like, oh my gosh. I talked to a guy today before I started recording. He's like, yeah, dude, I just did this job and it equated like four bucks an hour. Like, that sucks. Everybody's done that, you know? So don't get yourself into buying. Now, that's residential. Residential is its own beast. Commercial car dealerships for one carlos is for you man car dealerships i'm gonna touch on real quick car dealerships i have to say fall in the suck category here's why here's why before you turn this off here's why so a car dealership not only are the great big pains awesome right guess what's inside of there you're gonna have to use a pole because every car dealership has these giant panes of glass right there's brand new cars that you're walking around and salespeople who their livelihood is them making sales. So what's going to happen? They're not moving for nothing. Their desks are covered in papers that you can't get wet. You can't touch them because they got them all laying there a certain time. They're on the phones hustling. If they're a good car dealer, they're going to be trying to make these things happen, right? So car dealerships kind of suck a little bit. The downside is car dealerships are used to dealing with people. Like, like dealing, like, you know... Uh, that's twenty thousand dollar car. Oh, I'll give you eighteen. No, I'll do nineteen. You know, like dealing. So they're going to have that same effect on you. Car dealerships also are very, very tight in uh, how much money they have for stuff like, say, window cleaning. So being tight like that is going to create a little bit of a problem for you when you go in and you're the first to go when they need to do budget cuts. So keep that all in mind. The outside of the windows, they're also usually self-cleaning glass. Because it's a car dealer, they use that type of glass. Self-cleaning glass means that the fo uh, coating on the outside is hydrophobic. Meaning your water fit pole is going to suck unless you got a rinse bar or fan jets or something like that. If you don't, let me know. Ha, see the plug? See what I did there? Ha. Um, but uh, yeah, so hydrophobic glass with brand new cars and pole ends, you know, trying to clean and not smash a car, car dealers, people hustling, bustling, always coming in and out of there, papers everywhere, they're a little bit of a suck. But car dealers, I want to count by my hours. How long is this job going to take me? And that's how I bid. Those windows can be anywhere from 5 feet tall to 20 feet tall. Those panes of glass are always huge. It's a showroom. It's a showroom glass, right? So uh, keep that in mind. They're always trickier to uh, bid. And if you have one that you're bidding, shoot me a picture. Uh, email it to me because I can't get pictures on my text. Sorry for everybody who sends those and then gets mad at me because I didn't respond. I can't get them. Shoot it to my email, Josh, at Window Cleaning Resource, and I'll, I'll walk, over, walk through it with you, tell you my thoughts, and give you some pricing. But that's car dealerships for that. But commercial in general... There's a few things to check. Now, commercial in my world is anything that gets done less frequently than once a month. I'm sorry, less frequent. Yeah, less frequent than once a month. So I'm talking about like every two months, every quarter, every six months, every year, right? That type of thing. Um, those are usually large projects. There's usually property managers involved. There is usually a large uh, event project right you're gonna be there for two days three days week two weeks whatever right you're gonna be there a while so on commercial the big things that you're gonna be looking for first off is access now on most commercial buildings they make it so the windows are beautiful but they want their building to look sexy so they put you know uh railings and, and guard uh whatever those metal you know things are and and there's a courtyard and there's you know insets and the building's got all these levels and that's all problems for the window cleaner i always tell people it is not the architect's job to make the thing functional it's their job to sell the project and make it look good and that's what they do they don't care if the window cleaner is going to have headaches doing it that's it's out of their hands the building's done man they bought the plans if they buy the plans the architect's done so it's up to you to keep an eye on all the stuff now the higher you go if you have a four-story building i'm telling you right now you're more than likely going to have that fourth story be way different than three two and one because that four story is going to have insets balconies it's going to have fancy windows and sliding doors and all that fun stuff you have to keep that in mind so check 
If something is different than the floor below it, it's going to be different in difficulty. So keep an eye on that. Now, if there's a courtyard, is there water access? Are you pure water cleaning? Can you get in the courtyard? Are you portable or are you truck mounted? If you're not portable and you're truck mounted for like with a fill and go or something like that, well, how are you going to clean the windows? Now, if you're going to do those all traditional with a ladder or ropes and drops and you need to plan on all that, it's going to take you a lot more time. So the difficulty in what you're actually doing is key with commercial. Another big one is going to be frequency. How often are you doing commercial? Like I said, it won't be once a month or less, you know, once every two weeks or once a week. It's going to be once every two weeks, quarterly, if you're lucky, six months, maybe a year, hopefully not less than once a year. Talk people into it. They say, oh, we get it done every two years. Oh, that's so... You, Listen, the longer you have, the more likelihood you have of buildup, which is damaging your windows. Now, that's all true. That is hard water. That's buildup on windows. It becomes staining, and then it has to be chemically restored. Try to get people in at least once a year, if not more frequent than that. But the frequency changes. Now, if I'm doing a large building, say I'm doing, we'll say, not super, $2,000, $2,500 building. I'm doing that, but I'm doing it every single month. Now there's wiggle room. Because if I'm doing something like that every month, or every two months, or more frequently, those windows are going to be cleaner than if I'm doing it once a month, especially on commercial projects that are on the water, because what does water attracts the bugs and spiders love the bugs in light. So spiders go where there is light. You're going to have tons of spider webs, which take you longer, right? You're always looking at what's going to make the job more difficult. So those are some things to look at with, uh, commercial windows themselves most of the time you're doing just out so you're not worried about the crap in front of the windows but you may be worried about the bushes the shrubs the parking garages there a drop in a parking garage we had a project uh there's underground parking well there's a set of one two like six uh windows that end up being almost impossible to get from the ground without a lift because of the way that everything's structured so you got to keep that all in mind those six windows may cost as much as the rest of the side but you have to get that. It, it's rolled into the cost. You have to have to price that. So you don't screw yourself and make four bucks an hour. You know who I'm talking to. Um, so keep that all in mind. Again, ground level on commercial, same thing even around with trees and things like that. Keep it all in mind. Now the final one is going to be route. Now route is its own beast. Just like commercial, just like residential. Now, route is something that's done more frequent than once a month. So once a month, once every two weeks, or once a week. Uh, heck, more than once a week. If you got one of those, comment, let me know. That'd be awesome. But that is route. You can build a route around it. Now, the pricing on route is a buck a pain. I know. I know. You freak out, right? You look at that and you go, how is that possible that you do a dollar a pain? It's because I'm there every single week. That window's going to be relatively clean. It's fast. It's quick. And you know what? I don't have to be as kind of um, tight on it because I'm going to be there again in the week. You know, if it's winter, I don't have to go as detailed. I'm going to be there in a week. Well, it's going to be different, right? So um, you're going faster. It's quicker clean. Not as much heavy debris. There's not a lot of wooling or any of that other headache stuff. Once a week, you get away with it quicker, and the frequency is there. I don't mind charging less money because I'm building a route off. It makes every job that day less money. Uh, I'm sorry, more money or less cost because of that job. So I want to build my route, and I'm more than happy to do that. So a buck, a pain aside. Insides, this is the biggest one on residential for you to look at. If there is crap in the inside, it is not just a pita window. It is an impossibility. There are convenience stores or C stores. Those things, 99.98% uh, of the time, they got so much crap in front of the windows that you're not even going to be in there. And they're still going to have you try to bid it. What I say is, hey, you know what? There's just too much stuff in the window. I just don't want to bid that for you. I think the price is going to be crazy high for me to try to get in there. But the outsides, that's the part that gets dirty quicker with all the rain and elements and everything else. And that's the first thing people see when they come in your store. That part I could certainly do for you, right? Boom. That's super easy. Uh, on the route, storefront, that type of thing. Now, if there's not a lot of stuff in the inside windows, try to get ins and outs. Because a route window, if there's not a lot of stuff on the inside, still cut and dry on the inside. 
and there's frequency. So doubling that stop is going to double your frequency every single week, uh, which is pretty epic in the route world. So keeping that all in mind. The other big one is what do they put on their windows? Um, there's some places out there that love to put paper signs up. They tape them to the window and then the, the afternoon guy comes in and just rips it down. There's crap and tape and paper and everything else in the windows. Guess what? They want you to take that down. They want you to take that. If you got to always have stuff in the window, charge them twice for that. You know, instead of a buck charging two bucks for the doors, cause it's going to take you twice as long, right? Be expecting of that. This is what's going to happen, right? Cooler doors on C stores. People always are like, oh, it's a window, right? Yes, but it is a pain in the butt. You have to hold the thing open. People are in and out. The insides tend to freeze, so you charge a little bit more. So for every like three windows, I charge four windows, if that makes sense. So charge a little bit extra on those too. Uh, coolers are nice, but people usually don't charge for coolers. They are cheap too, right? They're making seven cents on a pack of gum. It's very hard to pay you $40 every week, so keep that in mind. Um, you don't have to worry about ground level because in a store storefront, it's always flat, always. So not have to worry about that, but you do have to worry about the crap inside. And make sure, for the love of Pete, that you get paid till pay. Uh, that's cash in your pocket. You don't have to bill. You don't have to do any of that headaches. Go for till pay. A few other things on storefronts. Uh, keep in mind neons so, so restaurants uh not commercial but route stuff in, in general neon signs suck neon signs will add two times three times the timing it takes you to do the window because you have to hold the thing back and neons are expensive break a neon one time and see how forgiving these people are because guess what they got one at every window on that side now you broke one that window stands out like a sore thumb those things are like 400 bucks so don't break one take your time around them but charge more you'll you'll be happy you did uh, another one that you're going to run into is smoke. Uh, if you are in a burger joint or a Chinese place or the dreaded, dreaded gyro, 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 whatever you pronounce place, holy mother of all that is holy. That is garbage windows. Uh, you're going to change your mop after that job. We did a place that was so bad that the backs of these TVs that were in this place, we'd have kind of put your hand like this, you know, to kind of prop yourself. Your hand would like smear on the wall. It was just awful. That's all on the windows. If you got smoke, if you're in a smokehouse or barbecue place or a gyro place or Chinese or any of that stuff where a lot of stuff's fried, you have to keep that in mind. Those windows are going to be garbage. You got to charge. Charge for it because your time, if they say no, great. Guess what? You didn't make $4 an hour to do it because they said no. Don't be scared to charge what you need to charge. Make that money uh, and, and do kind of what you got to do with it. Another few things to touch on real quick. When you're getting into commercial, lift costs. Lift costs, uh, that might be something too you have to do with pass-through. If you do end up having to get a lift, don't forget the pass-through cost because you're not going to eat it. They will happily pay that. Put that on the invoice and make it as a charge-up. Um, water fed pool pricings. I have people ask that too on commercial or residential. Do you charge less because you're faster? Not really. No, there's more margin if I need to, but again, hourly wise, I can still be more competitive, uh, because I'm using a water fed pool. You're going to be faster. I don't care about all these, you know, misinformed people will say that they go water fed pools not faster it's not better i'm faster climbing a ladder three stories to you're wrong man stop going out there and looking like a fool and arguing if you don't like the technology don't talk about it but there's no reason to say it's not faster that's just not a thing right it's faster you don't have to charge less for it though keep that in mind you make more per hour with a water fed pole why because it does the work twice as fast we'll say 40 percent faster 30 percent fast however fast it is you're gonna make a little bit more money. So frequency changes it, keep that in mind. And then finally, if you're bidding a large project, don't get overwhelmed. Like I said, I'm always here for you. Josh at Window Cleaning Resource. Shoot me pictures, we'll go over it. But take a project and break it into a small piece. Now, one building may have 10 pieces that you break it into. I had somebody who was bidding 15 buildings. It ended up being a whole sheet of um, uh, yellow, um, we'll say loose leaf paper, you know, ledger paper or whatever. 
of notes. It was just a bunch of notes. But guess what? You didn't lose on it. It was right on. Break it into a small piece where you can look at it and go, hey, this side right here would take me 40 minutes. Now we'll say 30 minutes. Okay, go to the next side. This one will take me 30 minutes. Now you got two sides of the building you know for sure is going to take you an hour. You're breaking it down. to. You can eat a cow if you want to, but add a bite of time. Don't take the whole cow down at once, right? <sighs> Worst analogy ever on WCR Nation. Congrats. You made it through the whole thing. I talked super fast. I had a lot of info that I wanted to talk to, and I didn't want to talk your ear off. If you're out in the field listening to this on iTunes or Google Play or SoundCloud or TuneIn or any of those other awesome ones, Man, I appreciate you. Uh, please, when you get a chance, share the content. That means the world to me. Buy your supplies through me, too. It's virtual high five, 862-312-2026. And if you want to buy supplies from me, this week's code for 5% off is PETA Windows. P-I-T-A. Paint in the ass. You call me up, tell me your stuff is in your cart, and uh, tell me PETA Windows, you get 5% off. So, that's pretty awesome, right there. Anyway, thanks. Buy your tickets to the huge convention. Get them to me. That's awesome. Either way, thanks for checking us out. Thanks for always checking us out. And uh, share this. Tell your friends about it. Let me, hey, let's make this big, right? Let's make it big. Uh, thanks again for checking us out. And until next week, go out there and be epic. Peace.